Hello to all of you. Morning to some. Good afternoon to others. Today's lecture is The Art of the Big Fat One by your resident French, Raji. Today I will give you tools, techniques, and other tips to make your letterings and sound effects in your comics less boring, less generic, more unique. And as you will see, it is way more easier than it appears to be. I will use as an example the, the sound effect that I made especially for this lecture. So I will encourage you all to look at the Void Lecture channel with the video feed to watch closely what I am doing and I will explain how I do it and I will try to give a clear enough explanation so that you can use it on any program you use be it Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint even, even if the tools are a bit different from one program to one other as you can see in this layer right there um, we are, there's in fact only two layers. There's these layers when I, when I put a, a little void logo and there's the layers that interest us right there. It's the, it's the one with the sound effect itself. You will remember, you can notice that it's, it's a one, one layer with one effect. It's the most basic one you can make and it's very easy to make. What I do most of the time is, wait a minute, there we go. What I do is that I use the select tool to draw shapes, shapes like letters. I'm going to um, I'm going to make a simple band. We have to draw rough shapes of letters. Use the select tools to draw the shapes, and you have a very basic band. You use the fill. And Adam, you have created a very simple sound effect. You will notice that there is a red outline. It's because I use uh, an additional effect on these particular layers. You can take advantage of that, and I will explain that later. When you use the, the options, the fusion options on Photoshop um, and the equivalence one on Clip Studio Paint, you will have to go to the outline option. You will select a color, as you can see, the color will change if I select different ones. And I can also select the size of it. I can select if it is outline or inside of the lettering for different effects. You can also modify the opacity. As you can see, the, the secret in it is to play with all the options available to you to make the lettering unique. We'll go back to the, the option of this particular layer. I will lower the size of the outline. As you can see, the, the lettering has to be um, adapted to the panel where you draw it. Since this layer is on a very black setting, 
the colors that will make the, the lettering stand out from the rest have, have to be on a different uh, spectrum. For the example, our blue bam right here. Blue, you, uh, sometimes you, I will encourage you to use the um, opposite colors. The opposite colors of blue is red, if you know your uh, color spectrum. But you can you can also play with the shape. Once you have your lettering and your outline, do not, by the way, that you are not obligated to do an outline. But to make them stand out more, I encourage you to do that. The big one here has different shapes that indicate a certain variation of effect. It's very important because when you do a sound effect, you want to give uh, the reader the, a certain impressions. And when you don't really know how to create an unique onomatopoeia, you have to use uh, your art style to carry a particular message of sensation. The wham I created here is more like a wham that implies a violent impact. You can deduce that because I drew all those lines that indicate that the lettering are breaking apart. And you can play with this kind of effect with simply the eraser tool and uh, the brush tool. You can add little bits, the red color. You can add little bits to the layers. As you can see, the since the um, outline option is active, it will automatically add the, the, the outline. I will make a different example to show you how a different sound the, with the same lettering can be used to carry a different impression. So we will make a very new one, we go to another layer. We will do, we will do, um, a cracker sound. So I will, I'm going to draw roughly a cracker. And from the get go, you will notice that the way I draw the letters will already influence the way you will perceive the sound effect. So one cracker, oops, and another. On the second one, I will give it an electric effect. On the first one, it will be more of a cracker from a breaking object. Mm -hmm. um, and as, as Peter just uh, <laughs> said in the Voltage Notes channels, be careful that the uh, onomatopoeia match the way it is written in the language you're using. Since we English. Back to the other one. When you want to give something an electric effect, it's all in sharp lines and distortion. But it's not the only way you can carry this kind of effect. So we have all two different kinds of tracker. The first one I will color in white.
second one I will give a blue color. First one is supposed to be, let's say, uh, a wall who is breaking apart. Let's go with that. Since it's a wall breaking apart, you have to think about how you want the reader to understand it is breaking apart from the, the way it is put in the panel. Let's suppose for a moment that the wall is already breaking apart. That is not being damaged, it's already damaged and it's breaking apart. To imply that, what I will do is that with the eraser tool, I will begin to erase parts of the letters, mainly on the lower half of them. You do not have to follow a distinctive pattern. Most of the time, when you are irregular in the way you do it, it gives more personality and more natural, more natural shape. Just try not to repeat a certain pattern too often. Then you switch back to the brush and you will try to emulate debris. Little pieces of it. We are breaking apart. You can still try to play with the shapes as you are drawing. As you draw, keep in mind, keep in mind that you can always come back to what you did. If you are not satisfied with one particular shape or one particular area of your lettering, it's not, it's not a problem. You can go back to that later when you finish the general shape fit all. When you have this results, you can begin to refine its ring, add it additional effect. What I'm doing here and I is um, trying to give an impression of vibrations in addition to the coming apart effect. When, when a wall is is coming apart if you've ever been in the construction or demolition business you know that when a, when a wall is coming down the the floor is shaking you are vibrating you can carry this effect in a subtle way like so one problem you will encounter sometimes is the need to retain some shape so that the letters can still be readable. You can cheat with you can you can cheat with the the way a letter or the or the effect of coming apart are, making them less realistic. As you can see, I'm just drawing little bits there and there. It's not really looking like a stone of masonry coming apart, but it still does the job because you can still recognize what letter it is, what it says. You can recognize that it says cracker, that is crumbling. That's one step down. Without, without an outline, that's what it looks like. It's already good, pretty good for, for, for some effect. 
if you are satisfied with that, you can stay with that. Now with the Kraken electricity. What you want to do is to uh, give ever the this different effect. I will make a copy of that and I will show you the different way, the two different way I do electricity effect. This one is going to be a bit smaller. On this one. I will give it the, the impression of sparks. By giving it an impression of spark, you can give it the um, impression that it's a fuse, a short fuse, or the electricity or who is suddenly going out. Rather than an electric current, you are making it look like an accident, something that it's not wanted. The little sparks must fly in every direction. Retain a sharp appearance. If it follows the lines of the letter, it's even better. See, you have a nice little cracker that will indicate that your electronic devices just died. The second one will be more of the electric currents, more like uh, the electricity is running wild or it's something that will come out of a Tesla coil. What you have to do is to use your brush to simply do very small lightning currents with it have to be very thin and irregular in the thinness. If you want to if you want if you want some reference, just go to Google or other internet browser, type electric currents or lightning inspiration and look how lightning separates itself in the air. It's like the branches of a tree. Electricity will try to take the the shorter the shortest road to the next conductive material. That's why if you have um, parts of your lettering that are very close to each other, you can draw more little lightning arcs. We are, and just like that, we have three different ways of drawing cracker. Now, what's going to happen? That I will show you how I show you how the outline will change the appearance of your sound effect. I select the, the uh, fusion option tool. Let's focus on the crackle that imply a collapsing building. All depends on the the colors of the background and how keep ink heavy is the background. If your background is very dark, full full of lines, full of ink, of solid ink, you can keep that as it is. 
it's already pretty good but if you want to give it some more personality and destruction you can create a hotline not too big one slight one with a color that will resemble the sounds of masonry some kind of gray of warm gray if you try to give it a cold gray it's more like ice it feels more like ice if you do it with a warmer gray like a, a red gray it will look like masonry like bricks breaking breaking apart and as you can see if i if the, give it back this uh, outline when you done that you can go back to it and try to make it look more sharp try to avoid a uh, round little things when you want to give it the impression of a building breaking apart must be all sharp angles squares also remember that to give it a more sharp look you can also look, use the um, Eraser tool, give it more effect. One trick I often do is to uh, go back to the letters and try to define more the shapes <coughs> of the letters. Do not hesitate to erase part of what you did if you think that it will make the letters more visible. Add some more effect, just like that. There, more advanced one. Now that you've seen how I do the coming apart, building, coming apart tracker, I will now do the two lightning effect, electricity effect. Evidently, I will not keep the, the same outline. In fact, if uh, normally I would use another layer, I will simply erase the, the first one so that I have more space to work with that one because I will, I will use the, the same color for the two since it is electricity it will use the same, the same one when I'm done with uh, this one I will respond to a question by Cozy Spoon in, in the chat, but first, you go to the outline option, you will make it thinner, and you will change it to another color. What I would recommend is to use uh, a, a darker color for the outline because uh, when you see when you observe lightning in the sky you, you, um, uh, the colors are more bright in the center of the lightning lightning uh, because it is hotter it's the same way with fire 
fire, the color is brighter and lighter in the center because it is hotter. It is darker and less shiny on the outside because it loses heat. You can try to see which one is the better. You can even try to use another kind of color if you wish so. And same thing from before, you can then try to add some more effect if you think it needs it. There is no need to use um, use an effect to make it uh, to make it blend because most of the time when you do comics with that kind of effect it will lower the quality of your drawing a simple outline is way sufficient as you can see i used the same lettering for different sound effect but it has a very different meaning even for uh, the same kind of source source of noise i could i could also show you uh, with the crackle for the coming about building but with the electricity you can see that one one uh, word one onomatopoeia used a very different succession very different meaning when you use different effects or ways you draw it. Now that I have shown you this, we will go to another layer so that I can explain to you another um, Another, another thing. It's a, actually a question from Kuzipu who is asking me where I do get my font inspiration. The answer is mm, from anywhere, really. Because if you use, I will give you a quick example. If you use your uh, your typing tool to make a noise effect. You can do that, but I find, I find it less original. Let's say I use this font to write something like that. It is perfectly acceptable to use that, but let's be honest, what is better? What you can do if you, um, with your font inspiration, is to simply uh, look at font. Uh, you can look at font that you like, uh, like in your favorite comics, so try to emulate them, but most of the time I just go with my instinct. I just draw it with uh, an intention behind it. When, for example, when I was drawing this crackle, I want I wanted to give it a crepitation. Uh, you know the kind of sound you get if you put too much oil in the in the pan. A crackle like this. That is why I, uh, I wrote the letter very sharp but very close to each other. 
uh, the crack of the electric currents are a bit less close to each other. I try, I used I used the transformation tool to make it uh, longer, if you remember. No, if you are a filthy, dirty, casual, or simply an Englishman, you can just use uh, an existing form like this because you are boring and you have no sub substance. Or you can be a crafty Frenchman, convert that text to pixels, Need some shapes in the transformation tool. Mm. Like this. And a bit of this. And you can go back to your painting brush. I will let's say that I want to give the impression that this boom, this explosion, is coming from around here. Let's say that your drawing of explosion is here, okay? You want to give it an, imp an impression of propagation, of speed. Run it across here, and simply add lines. Use the eraser to put some light inside the letters. And you can add some more roof shapes. That's a very that's a very lazy way to do to do it, but if you're lacking if you're lacking time if you're on the watch, it's a good way to quickly made the noise effect but remember if you do it if that's your main way of doing it you're filthy casual what you can we do to make it look better we could pick with the colors. Let's say we want to give it some explosion like colors. I will simply use some big brush. And remember the darker color has to be the farthest away from the explosion. can also pick one lighter color to significate that it is closer. Then if you want, I don't think it's necessary here because the the background is very is very dark, but if you want you can also use the outline effect to give it some more kick mm. 
No, let's see. We, we will not try to mix the two techniques. We will play with them. Hmm. Let's say. Let's see, let's see. We will use the, the lazy way first. We will make a slash sound. The first one with the lazy way will be a slash to indicate uh, a slicing motion that just happened um, inside of the pad and the other not lazy way be used to make a slash with a big splatter of blood. First, for the lazy way, you will choose your font. Mm. Let's, let's use this one. Ash. Make it uh, let's make it red. When I delete the extra letter, just note that um, you can play with the way your sound effect is uh, written with changing some letters. I will explain that to you after the slash example. this font for a lazy example we change the color we now convert it to pixels what the slash we want to show here is a slash happening inside of the panel With the select tool, you will separate lettering. You can also use the transformation tool to give it some more effect, like this. a slash if you ever did cutting exercise in martial arts or if you ever had to butcher uh, some some uh, something you just hunted like me you know that when you cut something and your uh, blade exit the flesh it will need it will make a bigger splatter at the, uh, at the exit wound and the cut will be larger at the exit one too. What you want to do here is to do a slight effect here and try to emulate blood. Blood is a liquid, so 
if you want to make it more realistic, try to make drops effect. If you work it before on watery, watery liquid effect, you know how to do it, but with your with your pen you have to do very thin lines then make it like a drops. You can also use the erase tool. And by the way, when you are tweaking with your stones effect, don't hesitate if your program allow it to change the inclination of your working layer so that it is easier for you. And add some more effect. If you are one, you can also use some brush with a splatter effect. I recommend to not use it too extensively because generally this kind of thing is visible if you use them too much. I will use a simple one. on a different layer so can so that I can select what I want to keep and what I want to erase while doing the splatter effect. As you can see I have different effect. I just have to choose the one who emulate speed better. Then you put it in your in the right side. Then with your eraser, you will just get rid of the effect that you think are obstructing. your drawing or you can do a very simpler technique you go back to your layer with the slash the original slash you give it an outline a white or in your color of outline let's see Let's give it a bigger opacity. Let's make it thinner. Let's try another color. so that you can see more easily. Then you go back to the layer with the splatter shot. You try to see how you can adjust it. Leave it like you want, but orientate splatter shot. With the outline, you can see where is your lettering. You can erase it later if you want.
I will make it thinner, in fact, so that we can see the other splat effect more. Perfect. Let's see. Now you have to be, um, you have to try and select now splatter than you want to keep. To try and make it more natural. Don't hesitate to use a um, smaller size working details. No. Let's see what it is like. It is better. So on the first layer, you will now erase the outline. will refuse the two layers and now that you have your one big slash effect You can leave it like that if your if the background is very dark like that. If it's lighter like this, you can use an outline or another technique that I use sometimes. Instead instead of using an outline, you wish simply make a copy of your layers. We select it. With a big brush, you will color it in black, like so. And you will simply displace it. Like so. That way, you will give uh, some some. Uh, impression of proximity, a, sh a shadow effect like this will make it stand out. But only if it's on a lighter color. If it's a darker color, what you can do is that instead of black, you can use a lighter color make it stand out. I don't use it often when it's a very dark background because I, f I think it's um, less impactful. But it can work sometimes. To be honest, I'm more of a fan of this version. Okay, so I showed you the semi-lazy way of doing it with, a, with an existing font. No, oh, we'll keep that one. another layer. Now we will use the more creative method when we will, you will create your own font. It will be a different kind of slash. Instead of a slash happening in a layer, 
let's say it will be a slash and make a very big bloody mess of its target. You, you, uh, I think you have noticed in some comics when uh, there is splatter effect or in, in a police and investigation movies and series when the investigator want to know how oh, an attack happened they will try to determine where this, the blood was splattered or on how it was splattered keep that in mind for the next step We will, we will do a slash with um, with a big propagation of blood. Give the letters a more liquid aspect. Not really a line. Is an impression of speed and special and almost as if it is it was drops of blood all right You will give it a very similar treatment from the same one. You will, from the get go, create an outline, a black one. make it bigger yes and you will try to work on how it emulates blood and drops of liquid When the liquid is ejected, it, it will produce a multitude of small drops and parts of it. Bigger drops can still be attached to the main body of the letter. At thin, thin trials of liquid you can also use the eraser tool to curve inside of the letters if you want to when this step is done you can keep it like it like that you can suffice most of the time or you can use a similar technique from the previous example you will create another layer you will use a splatter effect I will, I will try to use a different one from the from this example mm -hmm.
Okay. If you think you can use uh, an additional one for on the effect, don't hesitate, just reduce the size of it. before you will now use the eraser to strengthen the effect of dispersion blood drops blood droplets the secret is to keep the dispersion uneven Show the letters are still visible. If you are satisfied with the result, same process as, as before, you go back to the original one, you erase this, you fuse the two layers, and you will, as you wish, ever give it a um, thin outline or give it same treatment as before as I showed you you make a copy forgot and keep it this way on a dark background or you can give it the other treatment you say that the copy layer you make it black and voila Before, before you um, go back if you want to go back to uh, the previous step just go back and add droplets as you wish so that you can continue personalize your slashing effect you will just add the, the shadow later so I show you the numerous tricks. I think I can show you some more effects for more uh, different kind of thing. This time I will show you A more classic example of onomatopoeia from the from Franco-Belgian comics. When you use uh, when you speak of Franco-Belgian comics and the way they do lettering, you can think of the most famous examples. I 
I will show you some on the screen. This panel is from the comic Asterix. You can see that the sound effect of the trumpet Add the same treatment I gave I gave to the cracker for the electricity part. When you want to give a certain impression to a, to a sound effect, you have to play. You have to play with the the way the letters are drawn. You can also keep in mind that sometimes simpler is better. as easy as that. Example, if I want to, let's say I want to do, um, let's say, you will do a whistle kind of nose. But this kind of side effect, I do not recommend that you simply write so and give it the effect. That's lazy. That's lazy. Let's do it better. You will take your selection tool and you will use an onomatopoeia and this time it will be up to your interpretation of the very noise you want to write oh, with the sound i will write this and i want it to propagate to indicate that it is more uh, the sound is stronger the, the f when you are far away from it you can use this kind of thing to help you by the way if it helps you um, decide on, on the shape okay It's a very simple technique. It's, it's really the, the most simple one I will give you today, but it's a very effective one. So it's a good one to use. I simply change the color, the letters. And you will, as I said before, give it number of effects. You will try to refine it, maybe erase some parts so that it will sharper. brush or eraser to give it a more 
a second. And maybe separate, oops, separate the exclamation point a bit farther from the letters. Uh, one tip for all Spanish speaking friends. give it more personality you can also that is but one example but the possibility are infinite And it's the same with any kind of sound effect that you want to create for different kind. Once you have it like this, you can shape it and do whatever you want with it with the transformation tool. I encourage you to play with it. Once you have the shape, you want to play with it as much as you want in, um, until you get the effect that you were looking for. And it's the same for really any kind of effect. As I said before, uh, if you remember, you can also play with the way uh, someone will read the sound effect to cheat the way to cheat with the way you will write it. One of the gimmick I, I like to use when I do sound effect is to use the letter K with the K sound example I'm doing a punching effect and I will also not write the letter U What you can do is to use the eraser to make maybe the letters more separate, like so. Try to not make the legs of your letter wobbly. Try to make them follow the same kind of direction. It's really difficult sometimes with some letters like the K. Yeah, 
это. And as I said before, you can play with its chip. Until you have something that satisfies you. You have to remember one the important advice I have given you in the whole lecture is that the sound effect have an impact on you on how you the reader will feel your comic. Without sound effect, a comic will often uh, feel very, very empty, unalive. It's the same thing as not, um, not uh, drawing enough backgrounds, for example. If you can have a very well-made backgrounds, a very dynamic action happening in the, in the panel, but if the sound effect doesn't follow, unless it's intentional for some, dramatic effect uh, you it will f it will feel very empty it doesn't mean you have to cram every centimeter of every centimeter of your of your work with um, it's a sound effect because too much, as it, it is often said, too much is the enemy of good enough. If you do it just right, and have a very nice effect, you can have a balance on how the comic is read. Simply do not forget that the sound effects that you will make are also an expression of your own kind of artwork, your art style, your personality. The way you, you write, the, the, the shapes you gave to the sound effects are yours. It is, the, it is just another expression of your, of your art. And it should be... Uh, an integral part of the way you draw comics. As you can see, if you are creative enough, if you mix the techniques, your sound effect will have um, a common feel to it. People will recognize that it was you who made them, who personalized them. It will integrate itself to your art style very much, very good. But if you are if you are creative enough, if you are creative enough, it will also be very unique. Each time, it will not repeat itself itself in in, uh, in shapes all the time, and be boring. Final advice for the, for this lecture is: mix the techniques. Do not be afraid to use some existing fonts to help, help you at the beginning or to try to be inventive if you use it as an integral part of your uh, of your lettering in sound effects 
Do not hesitate to experiment with a, a sound effect to differ, to see if it fit the panel it is in. And, and I think we can conclude uh, this lecture here. I, I hope you liked it. I hope it helped you. The lecture with the resident Frenchman is over. Have a good end of the week, everybody.